Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. We're at Anderton's, in the secret location of which we may not speak. We certainly are. And we are with a person who cannot be named. Who bought us the Gibson Firebird, Firebird X. X. One of the most controversial guitar releases of the last decade. It's controversial um, because it's X-rated. This is the first proper, you know, semi-official kind of video that Andertons have been allowed to do of the Firebird X. It's, it's the first one where um, all the software elements of this are pretty much up to scratch now. So this is a really, really kind of in-depth, uh, you know, technologically advanced guitar. There's a, there's a video on the Gibson website of uh, one of the designers talking about it. Uh, it's a YouTube video and it goes on for over an hour. So we're not <laughs> going to try and do anything quite as epic as that. I thought we'd just kind of tell you about the main features, get Rob to do a little bit of playing so you can see what it sounds like. Uh, really though, if you uh, want to understand this yourself, the best piece of advice we can give you is find yourself a, a dealer that's stocking the Firebird X near you. I know Anderton's is one of the only places in the UK that's stocking it. Pop into Guildford store, Anderton's Music, and ask one of the staff to talk you through the Firebird X from Gibson Guitars. So we're just going to cover what I think are like the highlight sort of features of it. So. Uh, I guess one of the coolest things that we can show you on camera is going to be the robot tuning. This is bang up to date, the latest version robot tuning, it's the fastest robot tuners that you've seen to date. Uh, all six tuners will tune simultaneously, really super easy to do. So what we'll do now, at the moment we're in standard tuning, and we're going to tune every string, let's go to E flat tuning Rob. So click it down to tuning, Yep. and uh, I've got a little head up display on the floor here, because everyone needs a head up display and I'm going to select E flat and then I'm going to strum the strings. I hope you can see this. You can probably hear it. There you go. So we're now going to go from E flat to standard because apparently it has a learning algorithm and it will be able to do that faster. So uh, it's, it's basically whatever tunings you use most regularly, uh, there is a learning algorithm in here so it'll learn to tune to those tunings faster. I don't know how it does that magic. I love the way it does this. I never tire of looking at guitars automatically tune themselves. And you'll notice there what happens is as soon as it was ready it just kicks back, the volume kicks back. So, uh, Rob, didn't, Rob didn't press anything there, it was just kind of the guitar told him. And if you flip the guitar around Rob, uh, again, one of the things that, that is a, a useful aid for maybe bandmates that are standing behind you, there's actually a little LED light in the shape of a G on the back of the headstock, and that also lights up when you're in tune, just to give the band the kind of the heads up that you're ready to go. G for gratuitous technology. <laughs> Get me a hog! <laughs> For me, this is a studio guitar. I think if you're a guy in a studio and you want tons and tons of tones and functionality and you can't be asked to buy lots and lots of guitars and outboard effects, you've got it all packed into one guitar. I mean, it fundamentally is, we've got a laptop behind us. Anybody that's ever owned um, a piece of uh, plug-in software or modeling software or whatever and has used uh, on-screen editing like this, it's pretty much the same. But what you've got to imagine on, on this guitar is that the, the patches that you can edit in uh, could be any tuning, any pickup combination, any uh, combination of effects, and even mm. some amp type settings as well. Mm. Uh, so in terms of just some, a quick whiz through the, the tones, the, the, the knob with all the lights on it here, Gibson are calling the gear stick or the gear knob or something like that. Uh, and what it essentially does is it gives you 11 banks of which then your five way switch is kind of like five sounds per bank.
it's nicely color coded so that if you're in the yellow uh, banks they're just the straight up sound so there's no effects processing it's just different types of uh, regular guitar sound if you're in the blue colored ones they're preset to be uh, all the modulation effects so you know choruses and reverbs and things like that and the red ones are the gainy ones that's just the presets obviously you can reprogram these to do whatever you like <laughs> of other features that I that I do quite like is the um, grey knob the red knob and the blue knob here actually uh, are volume knob or you know knobs themselves so as well as switches so they're the rotary actual, as yeah, well as flick switches so for example this one is EQ distortion and compression you can turn it to increase increase the piece so for example we could stick it on distortion turn up you get more gain turn it down you get less gain um, the same here with the modulation effects, the echoes, if you turn them up, you get more of the effect you're using. Half an hour left. Half an hour left on the battery. Because we've been shredding for so long. Uh, and what's also quite cool as well, you've got a piazzo pickup in here as well as the magnetic ones, so you can do a blend. In fact, let's let's do a nice blend. Um, if we leave it on the uh, middle setting, so it's piazzo, and get a, a guitar sound that you like. The grey knob. If you blend it, we'll, and and it'll tell you on your heads-up display as well. Here, yeah. we'll go between. Purely uh, magnetic pickup, purely piazzo pickup, or any blend. So let's have a listen. To so that. at the moment, this this is no piazzo blend. So we're just running this through uh, a little Fender Blues Junior here on a clean sound. So all the reverb and effects and everything you're hearing are coming from the guitar. Uh, I've got a little breakout box here, which allows me to adjust the, uh, sorry, connect the guitar to the computer. What is pretty cool, uh, although this box is connected to the computer via USB, the box itself is just connected to the guitar using a stereo jack cable, <coughs> and all of the the sort of the um, digital information that needs to be passed to the guitar about you know what effects do I want, what patch am I on, everything. Mm -hmm. It's just going through the guitar lead. Um, so when you get the guitar, you get the breakout box as well? You get the breakout box, and you, you get, get the, the heads up display, you get an amazing kind of gig baggy type case. Um, and I just think, again, unlike, uh, unlike say, a, a conventional uh, setup effect setup here where either the uh, computer is doing the processing or a separate box is you know like a pedal board or something is doing the processing here all the processing happen is happening within the guitar mm. um i don't really know if that gives an, an advantage or not but i guess it's just you know less kit to have here's a myth uh, obviously when i've got robot tuners i can't tune the guitar manually is a myth because you can the only thing that is really a bit weird is the uh, rotary sort of knob is the wrong is the opposite way around to a regular guitar. So whereas you would move it one direction to tune up on a robot, it's going to tune down. One direction, wicked band. <laughs> So other stuff on this, things that you are going to have to be a little bit careful about. Um, if the guitar's battery runs out, uh, it doesn't work as a standalone guitar. Uh, one of the cool things that, that um, you get a good few hours life out of each battery and they're rechargeable so you don't, you're don't you not like eating them up. And you get, I think is it eight batteries? You get eight batteries with this guitar. So that doesn't, they don't all need to be in simultaneously. I mean, you've got eight separate battery packs. So kind of, if you're too lazy to bother charging one of the eight up before they all run out, then yes. obviously you've only <coughs> got yourself to blame. <laughs> Press 
press that button if you're playing a gig? That button turns it off, uh, turns the guitar off. So yes, that's definitely um, a button that, although it's, you know, it's pretty much out the way and it's, it's not a button as such, it's a knob that you've got to push in. Oh no, my button's off. I'll turn it back you, on again. You just did that on purpose. Three, four. You can't be. Yeah! Once you've dialed in an effect setup, so say you've got a type of distortion that you like and a combination of uh, the, the reverb and modulation effects, uh, and you just want the guitar to act sort of like a more traditional guitar, but with those effects, if this grey button here is pushed to the up position, what will happen when you use the five-way selector is rather than calling up new presets like it would in the traditional mode, it'll just literally call up the five different uh, pickup settings that you'd expect to get, but just with those same effects applied. Yeah, so it's acting as a regular Firebird Gibson guitar yeah. in this situation. Yeah. Well, uh, Lee, tell me what this is made of. Okay, so this is uh, an ash body uh, with a, a maple neck. It's a, it's a set neck, if you have a look on, on the back there. Um, set to stun. Kind of what they call sort of set through, which is where it's not one piece, but the, the heel is done in such a way as it sort of... The same way like as the epic Gibson Les Paul Access. That's the, that's the kind of idea. Um, and it's got a maple neck with a maple board. And the, the swirl finish, which is, a, which is a, a kind of a finish that they introduced just after they had the floods in 2010, where I had some terrible floods in the Gibson factory and, and where the paint shop was affected. There were big pools of, of kind of these crazy swirly paints on the floor where it had uh, all been flooded. So each of these is unique with its own sort of swirl and is available in either red or blue. <laughs> funky little breakout box that you get free when you buy the Firebird X. Uh, what does it do, Rob? I don't really know, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but you can put an SD card in there, can't you? Yeah, Nick was saying that um, one of the functions they've built in this, to perhaps for a future upgrade, is there's, there's an SD card slot in here, and they think that um, a little bit more tweaking on the software should allow you to actually use this to record you know, loops and ideas and songs direct into here. Yeah. Also, what's kind of cool as well is that the breakout box is actually sensing each string separately. Mm. So when you're recording into your, you know, uh, sequencing software, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever you're using, if you want to, you can assign uh, each string to a different channel and therefore, you know, apply a different effect or a different pan or something to each string. Going to get some pretty crazy guitar, you know, effects doing that. Gosh. That's a giant black contraption. You do. <laughs> oh, wait, don't break it, Lee. It's expensive. It's oh, so. So these are these two uh, floor controllers. I think these are really, really invaluable, actually, with your um, firebird. <coughs> the first thing that's super, super cool. I've never seen this done before. They are uh, connecting to the Firebird X via Bluetooth. Yes. Um, so no wires or anything to get in the way of your, you know, your volume controls or anything like that. Uh, they've got some very, very useful and easy to see sort of backlit uh, LCD displays on here that that essentially work as your changing settings on the guitar, it'll tell you, you know, different presets, things like that. As Rob is ably demonstrating, volume can either be adjusted by using a foot pedal or the volume, but it's again talking to each other. This can be switched to be a wah or control modulation effects or octave effects. Over here, this one uh, here will um, call up different presets, so if you'd rather use a, flip, a footboard than, you know, the, the, the selection controls on there, you can do that. It's got a looper built into it that, uh, again, I think is going to allow you to layer multiple loops. Well, you know, at Anderson's uh, Chappers and Lee, I always give a balanced review 
Um, personally, the Firebird X is not for chappers. Um, however, I can see, A, Gibson got a big set of balls putting out something completely radically different. I mean, no one else is doing this kind of thing, and it takes a lot of courage in the marketplace to put this kind of thing out. And also, I can see that this is applicable for some kinds of people, uh, not me. I'm with chappers on that front, uh, although perhaps slightly differently. I, I did, uh, I really, really did want to try this myself. There's been a, a tons and tons of posts, people uh, being very negative about Firebird X, and really all they know is what it looks like. I think that's, I think it's is, the look that put most people yeah, off. Yeah, which I think is kind of unfair. I mean, again, it's it's maybe, uh, it doesn't have the classic looks of a, of a Les Paul or a Strat or something like that. But um, I've actually had uh, a bit of fun, and, and the bit that I, I was surprised with, because I, I genuinely don't think the videos I've seen of, of what the sounds can be like, um, the, some of the sounds on the videos I've heard before are pretty ropey. And actually, when we went through and we were designing Chappell's kind of a gain sound and some of the bluesy sounds that I was getting, I actually thought the sounds were pretty cool. Yeah, we did find a sound to fit each of our specific yeah. sort of genres and styles. Uh, and, I, and I still think, you know, there absolutely will be guitar players out there that want to sit in their studios, uh, you know, and really work this and perhaps work it with some other digital equipment that they've got, and they'll get some very experimental kind of cool, crazy sounds out of it. <laughs> are bringing out site for Firebird X owners to share uh, settings and presets and things, um, which is a really cool thing, you yeah. know. And it comes with one of these, and one of these. Thanks to Gibson for letting us review this amazingly revolutionary guitar. Yeah, I've been the captain. I've been Chappers. And we'll see you next time. Bye.